Tell me if this sounds familiar. You wake up, you have a plan of everything you need to get done for the day. So you go to your desk, feeling motivated to get started. But then you get kind of hungry, so you go grab some food and something to drink. And then before you know it, an hour has gone by and you've done nothing so far. You tell yourself, okay, no more distractions, it's time to get focused. A few minutes later, you get a text from your friend and you tell yourself, a quick text back wouldn't hurt. That text turns into an infinite scroll through TikTok and Instagram, and maybe even binging a show on Netflix. Now a few hours have gone by, you're feeling lazy, unproductive, and have lost all motivation. You tell yourself, you know what, I'll try again tomorrow. I found myself in this situation a lot of times where I procrastinate like this and end up doing my work last minute. But there was a shift in my earlier years of my engineering studies where I was able to study for over 12 hours a day and not get distracted and I'll share how I was able to do that in this video. Let's go back to my first year of engineering. I walk in not knowing anyone at all with the impression that engineering is extremely difficult. All upper year students that I talk to about engineering would tell me that it's extremely hard and I need to put in really long hours. To top it all off, the first few people I met in my class on my first day of lectures failed their first year of engineering and were doing it for the second time. So I had to do something to make sure that I don't end up like that. The fear of failure was honestly the motivating factor to just help me put my head down and work. But because I was so scared of failing, I'd feel bad every time I do something that wasn't studying or going to class. Now obviously this isn't a healthy way of doing school, and since then I was able to develop a few strategies that helped me study more effectively. I do want to mention though that I don't study 12 hours a day every single day of the semester. I only study like 12 hours a day for about 2 weeks before my exams. So for example, if my exams are in the 3rd week of December, I would spend the first 3 weeks of that month studying 12 hours a day and i would usually study from 12 pm to 5 pm then take about an hour break and then continue studying from 6 pm to 1 am the reason i do this and the reason it's so effective for me is because the hardest part of studying or getting any work done is just starting once i started and get in the zone i'm able to do a ton of work and at first when you hear like 12 hours of studying you might feel like it's scary or daunting but once you actually start and you get in the zone, you get into that state of flow when you're studying, that 12 hours actually goes by pretty fast. Now let's get into how you can actually enter the zone or the first tip I have for this video. You start off by planning everything you need to get done. What notes you're gonna read, what textbook chapters you need to review, what problems or questions you need to do, etc. I usually plan all the tasks I need to do for the week on like a Sunday night. The reason I do this is because when it's time to actually start, I have removed that obstacle of deciding what to do. You know, that way when it's 12 p.m., I'm able to start right away and not waste time trying to remember what I did yesterday, what I should be doing today, or what I need to do the next day. I have everything I need to do for the entire week planned on like a Sunday night. For example, if I have a mechanical design exam coming up and I plan on studying for it tomorrow and the day after, I'll spend some time at the end of today planning exactly what I'll be doing. I'd grab a sticky note and use it to mark down the chapter I'll be reviewing. Then I'll have a look at the problems set questions and have it open up on my laptop so tomorrow when I start studying for the exam at noon, I'm ready and I have no more obstacles in my way. Now once you've started studying and you're in the zone, realize that distractions and excuses are the enemy. If you give yourself an excuse to leave your desk, you will need to force yourself to start again and refocus. To avoid this, I'll usually have everything I need when I'm studying right next to me on my desk. For example, if I don't have my water bottle next to me and I feel thirsty, I'd have to leave my desk, go to the kitchen and grab a drink. And once I'm in the kitchen, you know, maybe I'll make myself a snack as well or I'll run into my roommate and I'll just have a conversation with him. And what ends up happening is that two minute water break will end up turning into two hours of procrastination. To prevent this, you should have everything that you need when you're studying right next to you so you never have to leave your desk. And try to do as much productive work, like maybe, you know, at least 30 minutes of work before you have to leave and take a break. You know, obviously with the exception of like washroom breaks. Now that we've established that you should not leave your desk except for emergencies because you could obviously get distracted, there's one key thing that can still distract you even if you're at your desk. Your phone. Please, 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 if there is any work you need to get done, Take your phone and dispose of it. Hide it in a drawer, lock it in a safe, give it to your roommate, just do something so it's out of sight when you're studying. And I mean, look at it. Look how beautiful it is. Look how tempting it is to just grab and use. So please, remove this when you're studying. Remember that our phones are designed to get our attention and be as addicting as possible once they have this attention. The buzzing of push notifications, the nagging red bubbles on apps and endless feeds 
create the perfect mix of addicting distractions and instant gratification. One text notification, Instagram DM, school email, Tinder match, or really anything will get you to tell yourself, you know, one peak wouldn't hurt, but that peak will turn into a mindless, infinite scroll, and you're not gonna get any work done from then on. For most people, social interactions release a feel-good chemical called dopamine. Right now, especially during the pandemic, the social interactions are mostly through the apps on our phone. So to get that hit of dopamine, we're tempted to check our phones as often as possible. Some apps will even release notifications in an unpredictable manner, and when we can't predict the pattern, then we check our phones even more. Anyways, if you have trouble focusing, toss out your phone, get rid of it completely, turn off your notifications, and you will be amazed on how much progress you can make when you're studying without your phone. Also, if you happen to have an Apple Watch, get rid of that too, because when you're studying, notifications will still pop up on that, and that will honestly distract you as well. The next tip I have for you is to reward yourself. Have something to look forward to after you're done studying. This could be something like watching an episode of your favorite Netflix show, hanging out with your friends, playing soccer, eating your favorite meal, etc. It'll just help push you through the struggles of studying. The next tip I have for you is to ground your distractions. For example, let's say you're in the zone and you're studying, but randomly something pops in your head and you need to get it done. Like, I should buy a used car, or I need to file my taxes soon, or let me swipe through Tinder for a little bit. When these thoughts come into your head, have a little notepad next to you where you can just write down any of these distractions so you can come back to it later once you're done studying. The next tip I have is about accountability. You see, humans just naturally work better when they're accountable to other people. So for example, if you have a job interview tomorrow morning at 8 a.m., you are far less likely to sleep in just because you don't wanna let your interviewers down. But if you just plan on waking up bright and early in the morning at 8 a.m. to study, just on your own, you're far more likely to sleep in. For some reason, we don't have a problem letting ourselves down, but we don't want to let other people down. So one thing I would do is I would study with a small group of people to sort of go around this. Studying with other people is really effective because it gives you accountability. If, for example, we plan on starting a study at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning, I feel like I'd be letting them down if I don't show up. Even worse, if I come late, I'd feel bad because I'd be so behind compared to them. So basically, just studying with other people keeps you accountable, which means that you're less likely to get distracted or not study at all. Just be careful when you're studying with other people because although it is a form of accountability, it can also be very distracting if you don't do it right. So try to study with the same people every time Everyone should be working on the same thing. Everybody should have their phones away and everyone should be coming in knowing the exact same things. So no one should be a lot smarter than one person or no one should you know, come a lot more prepared than the other person. And make sure that everyone is also on the same page that this is a serious study session and we're not just coming here to hang out. Now, earlier in this video, I talked about getting in the zone and how that helps me study for over 12 hours a day. Now, the key thing that allows me to do this is by working on stuff that are challenging enough to keep me interested but they're not too hard that I feel lost when I'm studying or doing any work. So I strive to really go through this feedback loop. In this loop, I start off by doing a challenging task that I know I'm pretty good at. My skill level will then go up after the task is completed, assuming the task was challenging enough. Now, when my skill level goes up, I'm able to do even more challenging tasks. And as a result, my overall skill just keeps on getting better and getting higher. It's important to find the right level of challenge if you want to get in the zone. For example, if I'm tasked with doing basic middle school math questions, there's no way I'd be able to do that for 12 hours. It's just too easy and I'd get bored. On the other hand, if you ask me to label every single muscle and bone in the human anatomy without the use of the internet, I would not be able to do it. I would not be able to get in the zone because I know nothing about it. So there's no way I'd be able to do human anatomy for 12 hours straight. Another thing I do to really help me study for longer periods of time and get more work done is using apps or Chrome extensions that turn my text into audio. Now, the reason this really helps me is because after, you know, I've been staring at a screen for an entire day, reading textbooks, reading articles, my eyes can begin to hurt or strain me a little bit. So if I can hear my textbooks or research papers instead of reading it, it can allow me to, you know, spend more time studying because I'm not straining my eyes nearly as much. And so recently I've been using this Chrome extension called Podcastle to do this. So feel free to give it a shot. Anyways, these were eight things that I personally do that have allowed me to study for over 12 hours a day, especially during exam season. And in a weird way, I kind of enjoyed it. I don't know, maybe because it gave me a sense of purpose or I just always came out of it learning a lot. I don't know. But anyways, I hope you don't think I'm crazy and I hope this video brought you value. If it did, please make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.